play. Señoras y señores, el físico de la pata ha sido llamado el campo. Senhoras e senhores, o vencedor, Thiago Monteiro. Aplausos também para Carlos Alcaraz. Ready? Play. Hello, quick match. Mm, yeah. Really fast. How was how was that for you? Good. I yep. needed especially that I'm playing tomorrow. Um, I had to do what I had to do, so I was just playing every ball the way I would play it, and then uh, I did everything well on my side. And then, uh, yeah, clearly he was not feeling well, but uh, you have matches like that that come around the, throughout the year, and you take them. You have been playing well all season. Has Do you have any specific goals for this season? Are you working on anything special? No, I'm just staying on the court as much as possible. It's still the beginning of the season. I think there's there's plenty of tennis to be um, you know to be played. This is also the last event on hard court, so I just want to do it well, I guess. And uh, yeah, look after every single match that I'm that I that I get to play. Oh, Rigo, was, this is more of a non-tennis question, but I was curious if you have a favorite like walk-on song. Oh. I don't know, I'm just listening whatever I have uh, I've been on my phone. I haven't had much time to look throughout uh, all the songs, but I uh, enjoy music a lot. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. Ready? Play.
Ready. Play. Well, hello there. Welcome to Talking Tennis. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. We are in the house for the Miami battle between Carlos Alcaraz and Grigor Dimitrov, a pairing that had quite a few um, matches under their belt. Um, unlike this pairing, which is probably our uh, second match um, together, but fortunately we're working with each other and not against each other. Jerome, how are you doing? Very well, thank you, Nick. Good to see you again. Excited for this one. Um, yeah, the, la the last of the four quarterfinals, all the other top seeds safely through. Can the number one seed join them? I was good. I was, I was good. Yeah, four quarterfinals. Yeah, it's the last one. Um, mm. Yeah, the top four, top four lockouts. They're fairly rare, it has to be said. Yeah. Should that worry Alcaraz? <laughs> mm, well, I mean... Yeah, I mean, let's get straight into it then. What, what are we thinking? Alcaraz is the favourite. He's kind of got his mojo back after winning Indian Wells. Um, obviously very comfortable in Miami. Um, only taken down in the last couple of years by a very, very confident Yannick Sinner. Um, and in terms of the matchup, yep, Dimitrov won the last time that they played in Shanghai. But that was the Alcaraz sort of when he lost his mojo a little bit. And... Um, Something that I noticed on the head-to-head -head when it showed up on the screen was um, Alcaraz has won a set in every encounter they've played, whereas Dimitrov either wins in three or loses in straights. Yeah. So for me, amazing. I think confidence, yeah. momentum, matchup favors Alcaraz. Mm, definitely. Yeah. I mean, clearly the favorite. Dimitrov is obviously going to take a lot from that win. Um, similar conditions actually in Shanghai, but. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, it'll be strange not to see an Alcaraz win here. Although, I also wouldn't be surprised. I mean, even though that, you know, it seemed pretty comfortable against Musetti, Musetti was making him work for it. And if Dimitrov can, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, answers to the, or there aren't many answers to the question as to how can you beat Alcaraz. But I think if Dimitrov gets some things right in this matchup i think he's he's got a chance of, of getting a set at, at least um but that leads me on to my next question what, what are the what are the areas where you think our is maybe a bit weaker and you can exploit where are those areas <sighs> uh, you're asking the wrong person you want vamps or damien for that one um <laughs> i think that to be honest you have to hope that our is an off day um his speed and weaponry um are incredible and to be honest you just kind of have to keep coming at him and finding a way i i would say find a way to disrupt his rhythm but actually alcaraz is so good at adjusting um to everything so honestly if alcaraz starts slowly dimitrov has got to get the better start and then just keep playing great tennis and make it as hard as possible for Alcaraz to claw his way back in. And that's the only way he can, I think, get the mental advantage in this match. Um, Alcaraz's his game, I, I don't think there's any weaknesses that could be exploited by um, anyone, for, by many people outside the top four. People talk about serve, but um, that's, a, that's just all in Alcaraz's control, to be honest. Yeah. Precisely. I mean, I think you're right. I think Dimitrov has got to start well um, if he's got any any sort of chance in this match. Um, I might be a bit ahead of you as well. Let me know if you want me to pause it there. Well, the first round let's now. see how we are. So I'm seeing the camera is panning down on Dimitrov. He's back to the ball on the ground at the front of his racket and getting ready to serve Dimitrov in the ball in sort of a, a blue shirt with sort of white shoulders. Um, baseball cap um, backwards um, on his head. Alcaraz wearing a sort of a, um, a pink shirt, blue short, sky blue short, standing almost um, like by the backboard to receive the serve, which he he does off the Dimitrov um, first serve. Alcaraz goes cross court with a forehand. Dimitrov runs down that forehand, bullet down the line. Then he's got a backhand cross court to the Alcaraz backhand. They trading now for, uh, forehand up the line for Dimitrov. Alcaraz. Keeps that moon ball in play, and then that forehand from Dimitrov on the inside out is long. 
Where am I at? Yeah, I'm just a bit ahead of you, but I've just paused cool. it now, so I should be nearer to you. Okay, yeah. Um, at least we're we're kind of in sync anyway. Um, um, obviously, um, yeah, the uh, the setup for mine is probably not the best for doing live comms, but uh, no, of course, I'm I'm yeah, I'm quite liking the uh, the resurgence though in form from from Dimitrov um, at 32. He's finding some of his best tennis, albeit not as good as 2017 time but i'm really liking what jamie delgado has been been working on with him and seems to have a marked improvement um in his game you know he had a f few years where he was had a little bit of a blip but um jamie delgado seems to have worked one and he's he's kind of you know he's been at a back end of last season a lot of notable results you know the final in paris title in brisbane to start the year this year and then the final in marseille you know, and he's been in around semis and quarters, so yeah, I'm really liking it from from Dimitrov, and it's good to see it at 32 to to be finding yeah. some of his. What is it that Delgado has been working on? Um, I'll take 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 the technical questions on you now, and as a second question, um, given or you've noticed about Dimitrov regularly making semis and quarters, mm. is top ten inevitable at some point this year? Well, I mean. He's 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 nearing in now. I think he's what is he thirteenth? If he wins the title in Miami, it, no. If he gets the final in Miami, he'll be top ten. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, which is unlikely because he's got to get yeah. to Alcaraz today and then Zverev tomorrow. Yeah, it's unlikely. I mean, it's not out of the picture though. In the next, in the coming months, you know. Um, although, you know, on clay, he's. Um, not the greatest player on clay, but um, yeah, to come back to your point about what Delgado has been working on again, yeah, not probably not the best to know the ins and outs, but it seems to have been working. I, I'd be interested to see actually what they have been working on, but um, whatever it is, it seems to be working. I think often a good coach helps the player find their natural game and exploit it to the best they can rather than necessarily like sometimes it is about finding a stroke and tweaking it and improving it uh, but these guys play at such a high level it's uh, it's all marginal gains um mm. by the way we are at break point straight away in this um opening game and Dimitrov gets a let cord on the first serve Alcaraz decides to send a tweener back towards him because just because he can because he's Alcaraz and will use any excuse for it and it's better to do a tweener with there's no pressure on anyway so let's see what um Dimitrov can do on this break point. He's going to be serving down the tee. Alcaraz scrambles the return back in. Inside out from Dimitrov under pressure. Rushed. Alcaraz backhand clips the line. No, it's gone long. Deuce. Just long. It looks Just a bit annoying with himself. He had an opportunity there. Both players could have won that point. Yeah. Dimitrov getting himself out of a bit of trouble there. 15-30 and then break point. Um, would be a good hold if he can make it. But yeah, coming back to the the point on coaching, I think, yeah, as you say, I think it, at, at that level, it's often more strategic to to focus on on, one, on a strong point and and really go push in on that and really get that up to you know near hundred percent to really be able to use it as a as a lethal weapon. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, if you look at look at what's happened with Coco Goff's game and Brad Gilbert, like Brad Gilbert said. No, there isn't anything wrong with Coco Goff's forehand. She's just got to hit it properly and uh, hit it confidently. And for a lot of the back end of last year, that really worked. So, um, yeah, and obviously the forehand's good enough to beat anyone. So um, the yeah. differences between these guys, uh, you know, is marginal. Um, the weaponry that, you know, we've seen the Dimitrov forehand in action uh, today Um it's very differently struck, but it's it's about as lethal as an Alcaraz or a Djokovic forehand. Mm, definitely, yeah, especially, especially on the run as well. We see so many from Grigor, those on the run forehands and back with interest. A couple of massive serves there to get out of break point um, and through that game from Dimitrov. Yeah, they're just going a big graphic on screen showing that, um, yeah, mm. Alcaraz is standing... Um, about um, four meters further behind the baseline on return 
this year in Miami compared to last year in Miami, which is insane. Um, yeah. That's but, the dull yeah. levels of like return stance. That is crazy though. Um, what, because often, I mean, when, when you think of, was that a second serve return? That was Second serve return, yeah. Yeah, because often you, that's really interesting actually, because when I think of second serve returns, I think from with Alcaraz, I think of him taking the ball so early and just back with interest. So, I mean, if that's something that, oh, sorry, just a flick back from, from Grigor. I've just seen that, yeah. Um, incredible. But yeah, I mean, is that a strategic play from Alcaraz? Do you think it, is that something that could, could work? I mean, he's made it work so far. I mean, it wasn't clear if it was just this match or whether it's the tournament, but um, I think it works. I think, I think it obviously gives him more time on the return and gives him more chance of making returns, but not necessarily winning points off returns. Um, so um, I guess when he's kind of in rallies with other players who could really test him, like the rest of the top four in the men's game, uh then um then i think it's going to be a challenge because he actually wants to get those quick points against those guys mm. well that's the thing is he what's he going for is he is he now going for a bit of consistency oh, and again. yeah that's his brilliant rally at the minute and dimitrov's wow. forehand cross court is just too good alcaraz can't do anything with it despite getting a racket on it and dimitrov's already at love 30. this is exactly what we're talking about if grigor can get a good start like this gives a lot of confidence going into the next few games. There we go. Yeah, 17, 17 shot rally to start off. And that was that's going to go on the highlights reel of that rally mm. for sure. So Dimitrov has got himself a nice little opening here. Um, obviously, he's not break point yet, but he's he's giving himself, he's giving Alcaraz very little margin for error as the Spaniard serves body serve and it uh, gets the desired result because trying to run around to hit the forehand um yields going along over the baseline it's 15 30. um did you do the zverev marajan match earlier or was that someone else no it was someone else oh. okay i don't know why i thought you did that match earlier um no that's right it was john and jamie there's too many j's in this team um <laughs> jamie delgado as well <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh that would be a that would be a twist um slice into the net 1540. That's, that was rushed. Yeah. Just going back to that return position from Alcaraz, do you think that's, um, you know, is that something that he's been working on in other tournaments throughout the start of the year? Have you noticed that? I don't that, think or? he was doing it at Indian Wells. I think he's obviously trying to do it for quicker courts, but he doesn't need yeah. to do it on the slow one. Like Indian Wells, he was he was definitely much closer on return. We're going to see how he does on this saving break point, which he serves an ace. So that's a pretty good start. <laughs> booming down the tee yeah and we were talking about Alcaraz serve earlier but that was 131 mile an hour serve like when that serve is working um, there's not a lot wrong with it to be honest it's it's scary scary to try and deal with let's see if you can scare Dimitrov a little bit with this one on the second break point goes out wide No, try, but he's gone long um, with that I don't think it quite uh, followed the trajectory he wants it to clearly because it was going out but we've got a second serve coming in from Alcaraz. Dimitrov steps into return on the backhand. Forehand Alcaraz scooped up and over the baseline. Dimitrov breaks early on to love. Yeah, they showed um, they showed a graphic a few points ago about the average forehand speed so far. And Alcaraz's was about 15 um, miles per hour less than uh, Dimitrov. So could he be maybe a bit tentative in these opening games? You think? Yeah, because Alcaraz has one of the fastest forehands in the game. Mm. Probably ever. So yeah, I mean, it's clearly a bit, bit tensive in these opening games. I think. Um, Diego on Twitch. Um, I know you put this comment about six minutes ago, but I'm very curious about what you mean about. Um, what do you mean about them seeing Jarry's game yesterday? Um, it was it Jarry was playing. He was playing. Um, was it Medvedev or Sinner? Yeah, Medvedev. Medvedev. It was Medvedev, yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's in reference to the baseline game um, or not, but I would I would love to hear sort of why why you're saying there's been some observations of Jarry. 
So our cross mm. goes wide. Dimitrov, 15 love. Yes, good start from Dimitrov. Um, but I've, I mentioned, um, uh, I mentioned. Obviously, we've talked about the um, the top four. I saw a tweet earlier. Um, do you think Zverev's got a chance of making it a top five? I think definitely, yeah. Okay. Um, we, I don't know who I was speaking. Uh, speaking um, to. Wait, what would you what do you mean in that question? Sorry. Like so basically we've got a group of four at the top of men's game who've kind of pulled away from the rest of the field. Yeah. Is there a chance uh, of yeah. joining them? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I thought that's what you meant. But yeah, um, I definitely do. I think I think since he's come back from injury, I sort of think I mean you, you might disagree, but I think that in the tennis world his consistency at the top of the game has sort of gone a bit under the radar um he, you know he was back end of last year really solid results you know making most of the quarters or semis at every tournament he was i thought he was actually really unlucky not to make it out of the round robin at the atp finals he won two out of his three matches um in a tough group he beat alcaraz then um he went on a two match win streak against alcaraz in that period he was a couple of points away from the US, uh, the Australian Open final. Um, you know, he's had some big, big results and he's consistently always there um, week in, week out. So, yeah, I think he's got the game of it, got the game for it. He's clearly, he's clearly, you know, worked on that serve that was hindering him for, for years before. That was the only thing really stopping him from pushing on. And now I think he is probably ready and, I think he could challenge for some slams in the next couple of years, definitely. I'll pick, pick back up on that point because uh, we've got break points for Alcaraz to get back in this match. Dimitrov putting a forehand into the net, bit of playing a bit of a sloppy game here. He's got a, a first serve, goes out wide, forehand from Alcaraz in play, forehand Dimitrov sort of trying to redirect. inside uh, Up the line from Dimitrov, Alcaraz still runs that down. He's using his speed. Dimitrov's going to come in and finish his, that point off. 30-40, first break point save. That was good play from Dimitrov. Moving Alcaraz around, realizing that wasn't going to work, and coming in behind it to finish him off. Yeah, really nice point. I think he's really good variation as well. Um, that's what he's got to do. And he's yeah, doing well. He really did have to pick the Alcaraz return kind of off his shoelaces, really. Um, in some ways, that was a really good return from uh, the Spaniard. Probably more effective than uh, sort of Dimitrov was I expecting. But he's still got to save uh, a second break point. So let's see if the, the Bulgarian, what the Bulgarian can do. It goes out wide, but he's clipped the net, so it's a, um, a let. So we're going to try that again. Already a battle out here um, on the Hard Rock Stadium, or at least the stadium within a stadium. It's still a very, mm -hmm. very odd sight to me, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. Alcaraz and Dimitrov facing each other off. Um, Forehand in play from inside out from Dimitrov. Backhand from Alcaraz, cross court. Slice from Dimitrov. Having to deal with that from Alcaraz, who's going inside out to the Dimitrov backhand. Really short from Dimitrov. Alcaraz tries to do a bullet backhand, but it comes off the top of the net into the tram lines and misses the opportunity to break, and it's juice. Alcaraz probably had an opportunity there, given he was forcing Dimitrov to defend on the backhand there. Mm, just, you know, pulled at it a bit too early there. Should have probably waited for the right moment. He was reaching for that backhand. Um, but no, good, really good signs from Grigor in the opening stages. It's going to make this a match, definitely. Um, so let's see if he closes this one out. I'm just going to see here. Goes up the tee with that serve, but um, it's gone long, unfortunately. So he's getting the second ball out of his pocket. Um, obviously, uh, looking to try and put this away. It's not done yet. Forehand from Alcaraz cross court. Dimitrov on the run. That running forehand does not work whatsoever. He always hits it into the ground before it even gets the net as advantage Alcaraz. And that's the first aggressive shot we've seen from Alcaraz off the, the second serve return. So, yeah. Well, you've got to keep an eye on his second serve return position, actually. Maybe he's mm. going to start standing a bit further forward for it. Um, we'll have to see either that or um, he's getting used to the, the rhythm that Dimitrov's giving him. So it's another break point opportunity for Alcaraz to get back um, sort of in terms of uh, breaks anyway, rather than games. Um, 
and uh, remove Dimitrov's main advantage. As we've got a second serve from Dimitrov, it goes out wide, backhand cross cut from Alcaraz. Dimitrov inside out forehand after running around it, and that backhand into the net from Alcaraz because the Dimitrov forehand just sort of sat up above shoulder height. As another break point saved. Yeah, so solid, so solid on these break points early. He's uh, he's definitely obviously we've got both teams kind of sending encouragement. Um, uh, Juan Carlos Ferrero and Jamie Delgado kind of sending Alcaraz encouragement to Fever as well. Sorry, Alcar oh, it's another tentative return from Alcaraz. He just was too 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 far away from that ball, stretching for it. I think he's got to come in a bit. I mean, unless you're Medvedev, those return positions are a bit a bit silly. Yeah, because the thing is with Medvedev standing that far back, it's fine because he can rally with anyone all day. Um, you know, he, he'll just keep getting everything back. Alcaraz is just a bit too aggressive to pull something like that off, um, maybe. Um, yeah, so Dimitrov's sure. got a game point, but the first serve's gone off the top of the net and out of the court. So second serve to try and finish this game off, which is not ideal for the Bulgarian. Um Winds up into the second serve, goes out wide, backhand cross cut from Alcaraz. Dimitrov goes to slice up the line, drop shot. Actually, Alcaraz runs in, picks off the drop shot, plumb on the line, saves the game point, and he's fist pumping. I don't think that Dimitrov, that drop shot from Dimitrov, decently disguised, not well enough executed, unfortunately. And Alcaraz was just too quick. Yeah, too quick up to it. It's a good return as well. Um, some pace behind it. I think put Dimitrov on the spot there. He didn't, but he's quite good at that. Dimitrov, you know, he's really, really good at utilizing that slicing when you're not expecting it, but just not executed there. Something about the Alcaraz movement, um, I would have to say, is that you know, we talk about how quick he is and he can run everything down, but actually moving him around the court does still work despite all that, as we Definitely. see from that point there from Dimitrov. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's one of them ones where. If you move him um, around enough, the errors will come. Um, but when he's in the groove, you know, and you've got that, those, you know, he's he's gonna make highlight real shots. Um, so, am I a fist bumper? You know what? I'm actually not. Um, but if if I'm in a match where, um, you know, my opponent is quite vocal. Um, and I seem to be lagging a bit, or I'm a bit behind. I will turn to that, and surprisingly, it does actually. It does actually somehow seem to help. So only when I'm forced to, but um, not all the time. Ah, uh, you are a you 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 are a a gentleman, Jerome. Precisely, it's all for, all for the fun of the game. Um, um, yeah, I I am a uh, I am a fist pumper but not regularly like it's it's more of a i'm not interested i usually tend to do it if the opponent's not watching and <laughs> i'm not interested in getting someone's face yeah but, exactly. um i will definitely if i think i've hit a good shot there's a there's a grit of the jaw and a fist pump um, yeah a bit of a, come not, a, bit of a come not opposed to a come on either oh you're not opposed to, yeah yeah I'm not opposed to it. to it come on yeah, if you if you if you know if you know you when it feels good off your racket, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, um, I was going to say coming back to that um, Zverev point. What do you uh, would you make of my opinion there? I agree with it. I think to, I think Zverev's consistency is got him where he got to. The thing about Zverev in his career, like what he's achieved, is sort of after that injury, back end of twenty twenty three. Uh, was kind of more what you were expecting from him is that he was beating everyone else and then running into um and then obviously running into trouble whenever he played uh sort of one of the top guys um now he surely can compete with the current generation um of top guys Alcaraz and Sinner he's got a very tight um head to head with Medvedev and he's got a few wins over Djokovic the big question is best of five um and uh, you know he's I think he's only got the only top 10 player he's beaten in best of five is Carlos Alcaraz um and that was RG uh 2022 and then Australian Open this year 
uh, so, and I think that's the big question of like that's the thing that's holding him back from winning slams. And I, I think on his yeah, on the right team. day he can compete with the top guys. Um, but I think that's the that's the thing that he's he's got to break through is regularly beating them at big events. So he's back, only back, you're saying he's back. only ever beaten Alcaraz at it, as a top ten player in in the slam. Yeah. Wow. Like Alcaraz is the only top ten player he's beaten in a slam. That sounds surprising. Yeah, because so not... up until Roland Garros 2022, he'd never beaten a top 10 player in a slam. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, so his run to, you know, the US Open final was that, do you not beat any, like, was the Sitsipas yeah. in the top 10 by then? or He didn't beat, He didn't play Sitsipas. Sitsipas yeah, got knocked really... out by Chorich. Uh, okay. That is interesting. Uh, and actually, he's very, very nearly didn't make the final. It was two sets of love down against Karenio Buster. We were very close to a team Karenio Buster US Open final. Was, was that was that the was it the Karenio Buster where he where um, Djokovic got defaulted? Was that? Yeah, that was the that was the same year. That was yeah, um, yeah, a bit of an asterisk over that tournament. <laughs> a little bit, yes. Um, <laughs> certainly, think if Djokovic hadn't done what he did, he would probably uh, have won that tournament i think yeah yeah i mean that final set tiebreak between team and zverev is probably the worst quality worst quality tiebreak i think i've ever watched i i enjoyed <laughs> the tension and the drama of yeah it. that's precisely yeah so three game points alcaraz now to get on the board Really do like that pink shirt that he's wearing. Some can pull it off. Double fault. First of the match. Uh, timing. But at least it's 40 love. Um, he's got a couple of other attempts to to get it done. Mm. I'm just having a look at making sure I'm right with this Zverev stat. Um, yeah. Sverev. Um, oh no, he beat Yannick Sinner at the 2023 US Open. Okay. In five. Uh, but yeah, those are that literally the only instances. Like he's only recently started beating top ten players in slams. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think that's necessarily a, a bad thing. I think he was so unlucky against that uh, in that Nadal match. I think he. You know, it's obviously you don't know what would have happened, but I think you know he. There's a fair argument to say that he probably would have won that match. I certainly could have. Um, uh, but yeah, I think now he looks more ready than ever to to stop that rut of form against top ten players at slams. Um, you know, obviously that loss against Medvedev is not going to help. Being two love two sets to love up, um, but he was extremely unlucky in that tiebreak. Gorgeous. Drop volley by Dimitrov to get back up to juice and Alcaraz end, ends up on his backside during that, trying to slide in to pick it up. No hope of getting it. That is a ridiculous volley from Dimitrov. Bit of pair backspin on that. <laughs> right. Like, and that's the the touch and the variety and the shot making that made Dimitrov. Has made Dimitrov so watchable for most of his career, and how you know people were talk why people were making such a fuss of him ten years ago, 2013, 2014, when he really broke out. You know, people yeah. talk about his twenty seventeen season was the best of his career, but twenty fourteen was also a really good year for him. He was very unfortunate not to make the ATP finals that year. Mm. Mm. So another break point for Dimitrov. This is not this is very interesting. Alcaraz is feeling the heat in Miami. And it's a young Alcaraz fan who's um, biting nails at the minute in the crowd, um, as we see on the screen. So Alcaraz has got the opportunity to get himself out of trouble here. Goes out wide with the first serve. That's an ace. Dimitrov um, looks at it because it could have just... Ju he was wondering if it just clipped it, but it did only just clip the line. That's deuce. I'm glad that the uh, producer noticed my little pun there. <laughs> I was paying more attention to the tennis. Sorry. Yes, sorry. 
someone's got to do it. I, I respect it. I respect a man who can <laughs> deal some good punnage. I mean, some do another race there by Alcaraz, second in this game. Um, another, I mean, you were saying about the stadium. I agree. I think it is, you know, it's, um, and we can talk about the whole rude uh, dynamic and the, the, the situation at the tournament, but you can't complain at the visuals. I mean, it's it's a stunning tournament. Oh, stunning I'm not a big fan of the visuals, really? actually. No, I, I think the stadium, the stadium. Oh, lovely backhand pass from Dimitrov. Threads the needle with the back, with the backhand. And uh, juice. Lovely down the line. That's um, what Gregor does. Yeah, not a fan of the optics of stadium within a stadium. Um, it feels like the kind of setup I would expect from a 500 rather than a 1,000. And I think there's sort of the, from I've seen the outside, it's kind of what you would expect from a standard tennis tournament. Um so really? I I would say yeah the I, honestly if they dropped Miami I wouldn't miss it. Yeah, I mean yeah I would have to agree to disagree with this one. Um I just love the and how they have they've got that you know that that gr the pitch the grass pitch where they all practice on it reminds me of Arangi Pavilion at Wimbledon where they have that long stretch of grass and they all all the men and women practice together. Um, I, I really I really like the colours and I think it just adds to the, the whole atmosphere. You have that sunshine double, you know, Indian Wells backed up with Miami the next week. I, I really, I, I would miss it. I think they don't, I mean, obviously if it changed um, prem, premise back, premises back to where it was before, they're in a long rally on break point going cross court with each other inside That's out great. forehand. Keep going. Alcaraz goes for the drop shot. Dimitrov is there easily. Oh, and then the backhand is just. Oh, but it's Dimitrov's turn to fall down on his backside, and like that was such a good chase down of the drop shot, and he threaded the needle, and then yeah, the he left the space over for Alcaraz to pick him off. <laughs> um, no, Ghosty. I don't know if you're aware, but in Wimbledon, in the practice, um arena it's called a rangy pavilion it, um spectators aren't allowed in there but i work there so i've been lucky enough to go behind and there's a long stretch of astro turf mm -hmm. which looks like a, a a football pitch or something where all the men and women are out there doing their weights and practicing and running about doing their exercise balls and they have a similar thing in miami you would have seen behind the stadium it's a long stretch of there's, well, there's a lot of there's been a lot of sort of social media videos kind of coming out with that, yeah. and I'm sure it, the producer may be able to find one even. But anyway, I, that's my similarity. If you, uh... yeah, I I can see that. But... I mean, look, I've, the only tennis tournaments I've been to are Birmingham and Wimbledon, and for me, Miami feels closer to Birmingham than Wimbledon. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's just that it's the whole. I don't know, sort of do agree in a way. I think it's what what um what comes with it. It's the you know how it's kind of with those seats at the front. It's kind of like they're you know overdoing the the business side of things and maybe cutting. But you know, at least it doesn't really cut away from the tennis. Um, but I can see what you mean. Yeah, I mean, like it's not a bad tournament. I'm just thinking about what it brings in comparison and like, you know, our producer mentioned Rio earlier. If they upgraded Rio to a thousand and swapped it out, made Miami 500 as a mm. warm up for Indian Wells, put Rio here, that would be brilliant. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Okay. So Alcaraz has held um, just one three. Um, um, so interesting, interesting one. Um, we uh, everyone's enjoying my uh Birmingham comparison at the minute. Um, we uh, as we uh bring the match to life for you, um, uh, hopefully, you're enjoying us doing that. It's a great 
Picazoto, Picazoto. Eres de España. Sounds Spanish, his name. Um, are you are you are you fluent in Spanish? I wouldn't say fluent. I'm proficient. I would say. Okay. I did. You can have secret conversations with John whenever you see him. Yeah, I've heard. I've can heard. Jo um, John is a bit of a Spanish speaker as well. Alcaraz bidding for a third successive semi-final in Miami. Ghosty, I am very pleased to you to um, help Duran Duran, you know, play in your head. Um, any excuse is what I say. Uh, any excuse to get Duran Duran on in the background. I'm trying to think of Duran Duran jokes now, but um, I'm not going to try. It's going to be too forced. Goes As a... Uh, Dimitrov tries to go out wide with serve. Dirty love, second serve. Um, Stoke is definitely not tropical, by the way. Um, yeah, we absolutely can, not. It's freezing up here, actually. It's only set, it's seven degrees centigrade. Um, yeah, we, we can talk about Stoke. We won't talk much about the uh, football club at the minute. We'll leave that for... I, uh, I spoke to someone last night who was convinced they were going to stay up. Oh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll stay up, definitely. It's just not a very happy... I, I mean, to be fair, I'm actually... I'm not really complaining because it's it's almost fun being in a, a relegation fight because in the championship, if you're not at the top and not at the bottom, you're just floating around. There's not not really aiming for something, but at least we've got, you know, a fight to to um to deal with and that makes it more exciting but we will definitely stay up definitely there we go that's the optimism we like to hear from fans oh my word as Alcaraz tries to deal with that Dimitrov slice and puts the forehand into the tram lines it's 40 15. you can tell that he's tentative because he's going um for those forehands really close to the line but just not putting any pace on it and and that is when you know you someone's a bit tentative There we go. Well, obviously, we were talking about you know how much of a threat Dimitrov would be to Alcaraz. So far, he's proving that that running forehand has gone over the baseline. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely proving um, you know a match for Alcaraz, trying to spoil that top four uh, lockout party in terms of seedings. Anyway, um, not something I would have predicted pre-tournament. I don't think. Definitely not pre-tournament. Um, but well, you know. Dimitrov is uh, Dimitrov is one of those players who likes to take advantage when he gets a bit of rub of the green, um, which is a great thing, you know. Coming through a bit of adversity this tournament, uh, he came back from a set down against Tabulo in his first match, got the win in three tight sets. Did the same with her catch in the previous round. Oh, huge backhand winner from Alcaraz from the for moving up the court is up to juice he's fist pumping now because he wants his break back yeah it's good to get back to juice from 45 there but yeah he, he did the same thing against Hercatch he's come back from a set down um and now he's thinking you know I've come this far I'm not just gonna roll over at the world number two I'm gonna put up a fight and this is what he's doing he's bringing it to the Spaniard this is what we want to see um Anyway, it's it's giving us some great rallies and we're loving the sort of shot making um, in very different ways. These two kind of providers. Alcaraz is now stepping in on the second serve return. So, yeah, he is standing a lot closer now. He's adjusting. Mm -hmm. They're trading forehands at the minute. Up the line from Dimitrov. Backhand cross court from Alcaraz. Slice from Dimitrov cross court to the Alcaraz. Backhand going cross court short. Slice from Dimitrov. Forehand Alcaraz up the line to the forehand of Dimitrov. Now they're going cross court to cross court. Dimitrov is running around to hit forehands. Goes inside out. Alcaraz slices. Dimitrov is going to come in to try and finish. Alcaraz runs it down. Gives him the lob. Dimitrov to do a backhand overhead, which he does and takes the advantage in this game. And you can see, I mean, sort of what a, a point by Dimitrov, but you can also see in that rally, all of those Alcaraz forehands, the depth is just not good enough compared to Dimitrov. They're just landing just on plumb on the service line and Dimitrov is exploiting that and taking advantage. Yeah, that's a sign of Alcaraz. He's not really confident to go for the margins. He's trying to just mm. um, play the next ball 
hope for errors from Dimitrov. And Dimitrov really isn't giving him many of those at the minute. It has to be said, the points Alcaraz has won has been where he's been taking control. And Dimitrov is the one in control there because it's an unretainable serve at the team. 4-1 in this set. He's in the zone here. Nick, that is cool. Interviewing Marcus, Marcus Bucklands. What, what do you think his views will be on things? What are you? I, I, I haven't. Uh, I'm still thinking about what questions to ask him, and obviously that's going to depend on the outcome of the women's tournament. Um, yeah. Whether is it, it, where, so go. Sorry, no. I was saying that. Do you think it'll be more a lot of it based on tennis, or do you think it'll be stuff about you know the political side of things in tennis or anything like that, or mostly? I'm going to. I tend to stick to on-court stuff, to be honest. Yeah. Um, when asking questions, um, I think it has to be a very, very significant story to ask off court. Um, mm. I think, uh, you know, the situation with, um, you know, what structure the tours are going to have going forward is a very, very big topic that I think would need an mm. entire episode to really dig into. Um, mm. so to be honest, I am going to be focusing on more on, I'd rather focus on what's going on on court, his thoughts on how things play out in Miami and um, uh, see also how he feels going into the clay season because obviously um, he's involved in uh, Radio Roland Garros, um, mm -hmm. which I enjoy listening to. So obviously he's going to be paying very close attention to um, uh, sort of how everything unfolds when the tour changes surfaces. And hello, Jane. Lovely to see you as always. Yeah, I saw he was active today on, on Twitter because it's the 30th anniversary of BBC Five Live Sport. Yes. Yeah. And I saw that, that was... iconic commentary. I, I actually think the, I know they would, whenever you play Murray winning Wimbledon um, in mm. 2013, because that's one of the iconic commentary lines for Five Live. Um, for me, I thought Jonathan Overand's line was actually better than Andrew Castle's line for TV. Yeah. There you go. Um, um, but I, that's me admiring the radio commentators. And Ghosty, I don't yeah, know if you yeah. saw the stream earlier I had with Kira. I came at the end of the Rebecca and Arazarenka match. I predicted Danielle Collins to predict to, to win the Miami title. What, what you predicted that pre tournament or? I don't know, today. Pre tournament, today. I predicted Ziga Shiontek to win it. I think, I mean, it's hard. Do you think she'll beat, she beats Rebecca now? I think it depends on how the Alexandra match goes, but I would not be surprised the way that she's churned through this draw. I think Collins, yeah. Rebecca's had to fight her way through. Collins has been a step above every single player she's played. Yeah, she's been electric. And it does, and you can see why the, the interviewer asked, posed the question to her. Um, you know, I mean, it's obviously a very personal issue that she's dealing with, but it's also sad at the same time for her fans to to see her go when she's producing tennis like this and reaching big big uh big feats in the sport i i can see why i think at the end of the day you know it could we don't know how she's feeling after winning all these tournament matches and you know it probably feels good to win but you know it got the same thing happened with ash barty she just did not mm. like the grind of being on tour and had other things that she wanted to do. And I think the same thing yeah. with Danielle Collins. Um, she wants to maybe give it a bit more of a farewell run than Barty did. But um, hey, maybe if she wins Miami, she's like, well, that, this is the peak. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but I think no, she's course. got the chance to go to the Olympics. So probably not. Yeah, of course, it is, it is obviously a sad thing. But obviously, respect her decision nonetheless. But then again, you see, you think about what's been going on with um, Murray in the media recently. You know, he hit the level of pestering from the media is, is you know, nothing on that of Murray. But yeah, what a shot there from Alcaraz to close out the game to love to get two on the board now. Still a breakdown. Yeah, the Murray situation with the media, um, I could tell you could tell he's frustrated with being asked and. The media want a clear-cut story and uh, to, to report um, and say, oh, I think this is how it's going to go and then draw stories from that and maybe give them time to prepare um, things. Um, I mean, I'm hoping that we get to see Andy play uh, Wimbledon. Um, mm. That would be a great way for him to sign off. But 
whether he has surgery or not, he's not likely to be competitive. And part of me is like, actually, if he's decided that that Mahach match was his last match, I actually think that would be an appropriate match for him to go out on. Because, okay, not the ideal location, but in terms of the kind of match, him fighting to the end on one leg and yeah. almost having and almost winning it is the most Andy Murray way of finishing <laughs> finishing yeah. your career ever. It's true. It's just not on that that big Wimbledon stage that he probably would have hoped for. But yeah, well, he, I don't think he's going to finish at Wimbledon anyway because he was talking. He was he's been toying with whether he wants to do the Olympics. Although his recent messages were like, well, actually, he's not sure if he wants to play if he can't win a medal. But I would imagine he'd have a go at the doubles. Yeah, I'm um, just going to throw. I'm just going to throw out there. I don't think he will retire this year. Even though no. he said, even though he said that, I, I still, you know, I've been, you know, you see, you see, you see the way he's playing. I mean, yeah, he's not been winning a ton of matches, but this ATP tour we're talking about, he's, he's, he's still, you know, he was almost into a, what was he, almost into a fourth round in, in, in Miami, a couple of points away from it. So you know, even though I had to make quarters, that wasn't unrealistic. Yeah, but um. Yeah, I, I mean, we've seen it before from Murray. I, I just, I don't think, I think, yeah, he's, as Ghosty just said, he's got so much grit. And I think that is, he's, he loves tennis too much to just give it up. Um, but he also likes winning. And I don't, I think, honestly, I think if he doesn't retire this year, he'll, he'll come back in 2025 for one more year. Uh, but I think he'll probably finish in 2025. If, yeah. if he didn't come back, um, I, would, I, I would agree with that. But I think I think the, that's the more. Like, I think if he want, I think the only way he doesn't retire this year, which is highly likely, is if he decides he wants to end things on his terms. Mm -hmm. And I think the Mahach match, um, you know, has probably changed things for him. He's realised that actually, I was a setup. I was a few points away from being in the third, four, sorry, fourth round of the Masters. And then obviously he got injured, but I can I can play some good tennis actually. And he still he could have won even with the injury. Yeah, precisely. Um, so I think he, he, that's why I'm saying that now. I think he would have probably rethought things, and that would have actually spurred him on to come back stronger. What a backhand volley there from Dimitrov, asserting himself in this match. He's continuing to get the big points under his terms and Alcaraz is not coming up with the answers just yet I think with the Murray situation and with players retiring I think we do as fans and commentators am amateur or professional um we do tend to make everything about the sporting terms which is why when we talk about Daniel Collins retiring, it doesn't make any sense. Like, oh, why would you still retire when you're in the form of your career? Um, the reality is, is that, you know, there's other stuff that may be going on. Maybe Andy wants to be a bit more of a present dad in his yeah, kids' life. I've talked about that before. I mean, yeah, I don't want to make assumptions, but yeah, I completely agree with the Collins stuff, but I don't think that's the case with, with Murray. Um, I think... You know, he his kids are young, um, but yeah, I just can't see that being much of the case with um, with Murray. I think he loves tennis too much, um, mm -hmm. and that's what his I mean his you know whole life is shaped around that. But yeah, that's my view. I mean, yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if there were other other factors in the mix that, and Andy wouldn't talk about them. Because mm. that's not his style, really. Like you know, he, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't get too open. Um, I, and I think you know, when when we're only presented with the tennis case, then yeah, retirement doesn't make any sense. But maybe that's I, all I'm saying is, is that it's possible there's other stuff going on. Yes, Andy's a tennis addict, um, and he wants to be competitive. Mm. Um, but you know, that's. Uh, and and maybe maybe there's it's a male it, it, maybe it's just a male stubbornness thing that maybe is more of that for for the guys. Maybe that's why Rafa hasn't just quit, mm. even though he probably yeah. should. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, well, there's definitely is more to. Um, mm. uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, Rafa's. 
I mean, look, Rafa's kind of, we're kind of just, no one knows where we're at with him now. It's kind of like a bonus if he actually does play. Yeah. Yeah, I, I keep forgetting about Rafa. I think, I think he's just, he is, he, that, he's just done. <laughs> I think. He, I, don't he, know. He, I mean, he's cooked his body. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah, I keep, I mean, I keep forgetting that he's sort of going to make some sort of comeback soon. But, uh, I mean, a comeback, if we can call it that, it would be a fairy tale couple of matches. Right. Well, Dimitrov is three points away from the set, by the way, which is crazy. So, uh, like, Al let's see if Alcaraz, uh, how Alcaraz handles this game, because... You know, if he doesn't, he could he could lose the set by a double break here. So we're at love 15. Alcaraz has got a second serve here. Goes out wide, misses it. Oh, I think it was a let on the first serve. So, okay, good thing too, because that would have been a huge second serve and probably a waste of it if it wasn't. But yeah, second serve, that is a double fault going out wide. And it's love 30. And David Trough is now two points away from this opening set on a double break. Wow, yeah not ideal for the Spaniard. Second double fault of the match as well. Dimitrov yet to hit one. Four, seven minutes on the clock. Um, well attended here in Miami, as to be expected. You know, at least they do they do draw a crowd, whether um, it's American or from, from out of town, as it were. Although those front row cinema seats are quite empty. <laughs> that is true. I don't know whether I would pay for those, to be honest, even no matter how much I love tennis. As um, Amritan will serve from Alcaraz on the second serve at 15.30, starting to dig his way back into this game. Um, yeah, so Alcaraz uh, getting ready to serve here. It's 15.30. Let's see what uh, the Spaniard can produce in this game. Goes out wide with the first serve. Slice return from Dimitrov. Drop shot Alcaraz. Dimitrov is already wise to it. Goes backhand cross court. That's too good. Alcaraz loops it up. Somehow that ball lands in court. Gives him time to recover. Dimitrov now slices cross court and goes wide. How on earth Alcaraz's shot landed in? I don't know. But that really yeah, doesn't come back into that point. I think he's played his get out of jail free card there, um, Alcaraz. And that could come back to bite Dimitrov there, how he's not won that point and not set up two set points with it. The Spaniard so, might just force Dimitrov to serve this one out. Maybe. Maybe so. Oh, he's gone for the drive volley. That's a, a really strange shot Ooh. choice there. Really highlighting the tentativeness from the world number two in this opening set. He's just gone for a drive volley. Didn't let the ball bounce. Rushed it and sends it long. Suddenly, set point, Grigor Dimitrov to take the lead over Carlos Alcaraz here in Miami. So Al Alcaraz is going to be serving at 30-40, goes out to the body. Um, Dimitrov get, blocks it back in place, slice from Dimitrov in the backhand again to the inside out forehand of Alcaraz. Backhand Dimitrov looped, forehand oh. Alcaraz also looped. Oh my word, what was that backhand from Grigor Dimitrov? I don't know how he pulled that off, but that was brilliant. An absolute <laughs> bullet with the top spin and it's 6-2 opening set to the Bulgarian. That was confusing because I, th I think Alcaraz and Dimitrov both thought that Alcaraz's forehand was long. So Dimitrov just played a slap one thinking that it was out. Then they both don't know <laughs> what is going on. And somehow Dimitrov takes the first set after a dominant performance. I'm not surprised because I did think Alcaraz's forehand was out as well. Mm. Well, possibility it was out. Like I was kind of hesitating a little bit. And I thought, no, do you know what? It's probably clipped the line. And then Dimitrov is, yeah, like you're right. Neither of them thought it was in. So it doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, maybe it was out. It Same result. Well. Yeah. From a bit of trouble with live Hawkeye, who knows? That is, that is the case. So, so, so we might, we are, if Dimitrov continues this trajectory, he's on course for a semi-final against Al Alexander Zverev. Tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, who he's not got a great head-to-head -head with. One 
win from eight matches played Ooh. against the German. So, yeah, tough one there. But who knows? I mean, he's nearing the top of his game at the minute, is Dimitrov. Uh, so is Verov, though. So be a really should be a really good clash if both of them can play some good tennis. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like Any clash between, like, Dimitrov has won one match, so it's not a complete beatdown. Um, he's got a chance of winning a second, um, and he'll believe he's got a chance of winning a second. Um, and obviously, that match, he's got a chance of, if he beats Zverev, it'd be a return to the top 10, regardless of the outcome. Um, and Sin is probably looking at um, an opportunity of going overtaking Alcaraz and getting number two if Alcaraz goes out. Yeah. Yeah. I think well, he has to win the tournament to do that. But is that I think I think he will though if, if he wins the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, could I, I think it depends. I think it yes. it depends on who he plays. I think if he won the tournament, it'd be Alcaraz in the final. Alcaraz might have the edge. Yeah, but he was it he he was saying it was finalist last year, wasn't he? So, yeah, Sinner was the finalist. So yeah, so he's defending finals points. So he he'd stay on the same points. So which is currently behind Alcaraz. Alcaraz loses mm. if, again. We're assuming Alcaraz is going to lose today. But <laughs> if Alcaraz does lose this match against Dimitrov, and it's nowhere near a done deal that that's going to happen, um, he's only. Oh wait, they've changed the score. Oh wait, they've changed the point system. They've changed what? the point system. It would be. I think he's only losing like a, it would only be like a couple of hundred points. Okay. Um, are you looking at the live ranking? Yeah. Yeah, I can't do that on mine. So, yeah. Well, whilst Jerome's doing that, we're back underway, and Dimitrov is thirty love up in this service game, currently riding uh, the momentum. No, from... he won't. He won't overtake. Oh, even if he wins the tournament. Yeah, I'm not sure how to see it. If, with... if you scroll to the right, it gives you future points. Uh, wait, scroll to the right. So what? 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 Um, what website do you suggest? Oh, live ATP rankings. Yeah, I'm on that. Oh, I know. I'll, I'll on the, that the max, the max points. Yeah, max possible points. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He he is is 700 less than Alcaraz's. Okay, so he can't overtake Alcaraz if he wins Miami, regardless. But he's putting himself in a good position to yeah. put pressure on. Although, having said that, clay season, um, uh, you would imagine uh, Alcaraz um, um, is going to have the edge in that rivalry on that surface. Although, I do think Sin is underrated on clay. Yeah. Well, he's not recorded, you know, many big, big, um, big results on the surface. But I think he's yeah, he's almost a dark horse even. Depends on you how to find big result. I mean, you're right. He's not one of five hundred on clay. He's not um, reached a Masters one thousand final on clay. He's not reached a Grand Slam. He's not. He's 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 got to the court finals of Roland Garros. Um, I think for a, for a top three player, that it's not worrying. But I mean, it's you know, it's 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 it's, it's rare. I think. But you know, I think for me, the thing that kind of gives him hope is how he got that run on Gareth's quarterfinal, because you know he got there in twenty twenty. Um, he beat Zverev um, to do that, and then he. Uh, Pushed Nadal for a set, um, kind of played fearless tennis on clay against him. Um, probably was the closest anyone came to winning a set off Nadal in the whole tournament, and that included Djokovic. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a there's a raw level in there that 
he's got the capability of doing well on clay. Actually, didn't he beat Alcaraz on clay in Umag um, two years ago, 2022? Because I think that was the same year Musetti beat Alcaraz in isn't Hamburg. That the year that, that, isn't that the year Alcaraz won Umag, though? No, Alcaraz won Umag in 21. Oh, uh, okay. Then was that the year that gas? No, that, that was that was twenty one as well. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I'm sure Yannick Sinner won that type. It was it was it was definitely a two fifty a clay two fifty title, and he beat Alcaraz in the final because that was the match. That was the most recent match before they played that U.S. Open epic. I'm looking it up. Um, Alcaraz at forty love on his serve. By the way, the set could be a bit more competitive. Um, yeah, so looking at the 2022 summer, uh, yeah, so, yeah, Sinner beat Alcaraz in the Umag final of 2022, 6-7, 6-1, 6-1. Wow. 6-1, <laughs> after the tight first set, wow. Yeah. Um, and that was a week after Musetti had beaten Alcaraz in the Hamburg final. Hmm. Oh, uh, yes. Um, so, yeah, so actually Sinner has got a clay 250 win over Alcaraz. It's then up to your personal opinion, which I'm not going to argue with either way on how much that matters. <laughs> mm. Whether the match, the match matters regardless of level of tournament. Obviously... They were different players back then, but I think Alcaraz and Sinner showed their potential against each other even two years ago. Yeah, when he was 18. Was he, I think he would have been 19 by that point, because I think he turns, his birthday's in May. So I think okay. he's turning 20, I think he's turning 21 in May, mm -hmm. in Madrid. Oh, wow. Oh, what a running forehand from Alcaraz. That's an Alcaraz special. Yeah. There you go. That's when the Alcaraz of it all starts to kick in. Do you think we'll get another cake gate in Madrid? Whether they learned from last year. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> Figured, figured, I, I figured you had when you when you mentioning like I was like um oh, seemed weren't sure about Alcaraz's birthday. It's like no, that's 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 how we got cake gate. <laughs> yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Which, to be honest, didn't annoy me as much as how they treated the women's doubles finalists, or yeah. even the women's singles finalists in comparison. Hmm. But then, you know, we want to get our press passes for Madrid this year. So they were they were very good to the talking tennis and giving us our first sort of Masters one thousand press pass. What in which one? Madrid. We we got Madrid press passes, or John did last year. Nice. So he was on the ground for that. Saw the that Sviontek Sabalenka final live. Um, cool. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good time for them. Uh, for for us, Madrid, Madrid is one of the masters I'd quite like to go to. I've heard good things about it. People do say it's a very good atmosphere. Yeah, and obviously, I don't just mean Arena Sabalenka. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. Um, yeah, what other masters have you not been to that you'd like to go to? The only tournaments I've ever been to are Wimbledon and um, Birmingham. So I've never been to a Masters 1000. Oh, really? Oh. No. I, I mean, to be honest, Jerome, I'm going to say something. I have never, I've only left the UK once in my life. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Um, and that was to go on a holiday that I'd won. So. There you go. So. Everyone knows what to get you uh, for your next present. Then <laughs> <laughs> get me tennis so quick. Like I think the one, the Masters One Thousand, I most want to visit. That's 
it is Indian Wells. Yeah, I mean, that's the classic, isn't it? It's just... That's, to me, that's the ultimate tennis fan experience. Yeah, I, I, that is definitely on my list. I mean, that's obviously the number one, but I'm thinking realistically, you know, it's not, not going to happen for a while, but... Uh... Yeah, that's, that's a bucket list. I've saved up a load of money for that. Mm. Yeah, I um, I went to Paris last year. Uh, sorry, in 2022. Um, on my year abroad, actually, I was in. I went to did the WTA 250 in Lyon and then the Masters 1000 in Paris. Really, nice. I really liked um, Paris. But one th I mean, I wrote an article about it after, but the French crowd, I mean, that was my first... <laughs> proper real life experience it was hugo gaston against medvedev quarter final and i'm i was that's when i really you know realized wow medvedev you are you are a madman i mean how he how on earth he got through that that match in made it look easy was was incredible i mean you know it was celebrating like france had won the world cup when when uh when Medvedev plants a first serve in the net, in between the serves, it was, you know, it was ridiculous. Uh, also ridiculous was that 91 mile an hour forehand speed from Grigor Dimitrov, like running around his forehand and hitting it up the line. Um, mm. Potentially a bit of trouble for, for this game, but then Alcaraz hits an ace. So no problem there, 15 all. Um, so... Uh, yeah, could I mean Dimitrov can get an early break here? You feel like he could be running away from the Spaniard. I would agree with that assessment. If uh, if Alcaraz goes down a break, you have to feel like Dimitrov's in the driving seat. And it's not looking good. That's another double fault from Alcaraz. Fifteen thirty. Really, mm. that set got away from him there. Yeah. If you want me to give a, a realistic target for a Masters 1000 to visit, I think probably Rome is the one I'd do. Um, rather than, I mean, Paris is fun, but it looks fun, but that's um, it's quite a sort of uh, tight. Oh, horrible drop shot from Alcaraz. Yeah, fifteen forty. That doesn't cross the that 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 just doesn't even go any near crossing the net. And uh, fifteen forty on the for Alcaraz um, to face. So we'll have to focus on the match. I think mm. uh, Alcaraz is stepping up, getting ready to serve. Um, the crowd's cheering him on. They're trying to keep see see if this can be made more of a match of. Oh. <laughs> Oof. Whoa! What a return from Grigor Dimitrov. Forehand right in the corner. Mike Tyson approves. That was worthy of, of that was a right hook worthy of that man himself. D Grigor wow. Dimitrov has set the break up against Carlos Alcaraz in the quarterfinals of Miami Open. Who'd have thunk it? Yeah. I mean. <sighs> <laughs> Talking about forehands earlier, I mean, Grigor Dimitrov, wow, 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 wow. Take a bow. On break point as well. I mean, he's, you know, not much emotion from the Bulgarian as well, which is a good sign. He's really focused, really focused today. You can tell he's dialed in. Like, the first set, some of the service games were really scrappy, but, I mean, obviously, commentators curse him coming. His service mm -hmm. games this set have actually been pretty good. Started off pretty well there with that 15 love. Let's see, because as soon as a commentator usually says something like that, the player immediately stops doing so well. But that's another great serve up the tee from Dimitrov. Goes inside out the forehand, slice from Alcaraz. Mm -hmm. The forehand of Dimitrov inside out. Backhand Alcaraz into the net, 30 love. Yeah, I mean, he's looking pretty confident out here. I, and yeah, he's his serve is really setting up that like even if they do get into a rally, he is dictating. Hi, Shrana. Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. Grigor Dimitrov is now going to be serving up the tee for an ace. Foil love. Too good. Too good from this Bulgar from the Bulgarian right now. Um, hoping to get himself a 4-1 lead with only the one break, remember. Yeah. It's the advantage of getting that break at the back end of the the first set to, to take it. I mean, you, you get that serve as advantage. Great serve, plus one drop shot. And uh, Dimitrov closes the game out, change again to 4-1. And, uh, and judging by your predictions, Jerome, you must be feeling pretty good right now, according to Kira. Well, yeah, I mean, I, didn't, I did say uh, that Alka as well. I mean, I don't know, when I was watching him against Musetti yesterday, I mean, I predicted Musetti to take him down and, and he didn't. But even in that Musetti match, you know, it was straight set, 6-3, 6-3, I think. But throughout, I watched all of the second set and... Misetti was bringing it to him, and Alcaraz at points looked a bit, bit uncertain, and that uncertainty has followed into today because Dimitrov is just taking advantage. I mean, he's bringing it to the Spaniard; he's dictating. Yeah, he is. I mean, it's interesting you're saying that. So, I mean, have you been watching all of Alcaraz's matches this tournament, or have you only watched? His Musetti one in this one. I what no, I watched um I watched the Monfils one and okay. and the back the second set of the Musetti one. Um how did he look against Monfils? Um a lot better than against Musetti, to be honest. Um he was a lot more dominant and he was a lot on the front foot a lot more. Uh but you know, last game he was a bit tentative and this game, I mean, t literally take nothing away from from Dimitrov because he is just outplaying him. But you can see by the p the position of his shots where he's l putting them, you can tell he's sensitive. You know that that average spin is much lower than usual. Uh, the average speed on that forehand is is much lower than usual as well. He's he's playing safe and. And when you are play, when you're playing safe, you're going to get punished. So. Has Alcaraz reverted to how he was pre-Indian Wells, pre-Golden Swing? Um, no, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't make any uh, assumptions like that. But uh, what well, in terms of his style or in terms of his form? Um, I would say, well, I, I, mean, I, mean, form, I mean, like level, level form, yeah. Rather than I mean, they, they come hand in hand, yeah. I mean, may, I mean, he's he's on a nine match win streak, let's not forget. Um, but uh, oh, what a return for Dimitrov inside out on the backhand, love 15. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I know, as I as I say, he's on a nine match win streak, so I think a loss like this is. It's obviously going to shock a few people, but, you know, I think it's just the Sunshine double curse at the moment, which the new that generation uh, is struggling with. I mean, you say it's a curse. It's not been done that often. True, true. Um, I guess I'm so used to watching uh, Novak lift those titles, but... That is true, but then it's Novak Djokovic and he's extraordinary. Well, is is Alcaraz not a wizard of his of his era? Of his era, um, do I of his era? Yes, um, I think it's too early to kind of put him in the same category as Djokovic. Uh, yes, I know. I mean, he, I mean, he's he's broken a lot of. Uh, a lot of the young records on tour, which is promising to, for what is to come. But yeah, I do agree. There's not, you know, we haven't seen much enough of him yet. But I think in terms of breaking through at a young age and, and breaking a certain level at a young age, it can only mean uh, big things to come. Yes, I would agree with that. He, mm. you, you don't get, you don't get the kind of results he has at his age and not build a very nice uh, trophy cabinet off the back of it. 
yeah, what Swarner said just then as well is exactly what we were saying. Yeah, I think he's 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 changed his game style. You know, obviously that return position as well, playing more cost-effective shots, and that's probably his downfall because what you know how what what brought him to the level or to the number one status and to those Grand Slam titles is playing that really ultra aggressive tennis and because he is being a bit bit more effective you know other people are you know the odd you have the odd match where someone will pounce on that and someone will recognize that and really you know be striking the ball well enough to to take advantage of that that wasn't a good strike from Alcaraz on the forehand and it's gone over the baseline well, he's a couple of points away from really unraveling now um 30 or one four Alcaraz serving this is going to be a critical point. This could decide how quick. Uh, this could decide the outcome of the match. I don't yeah. think that's an exaggeration. In forehand up the line from Alcaraz is going to try and come in. Alcaraz is yeah. going to do the drop volley. Backhand Dimitrov up the line. Alcaraz gave him the space and he took it. 30 40. Prime, prime example. Okay, just there. A, a, a pretty poor return. Backhand slice from Dimitrov lands mid court. You expect the plus one from Alcaraz there, the forehand. You expect that to be deep and powerful. He's just put it plumb on the service line again, you know, with the approach shot. And that's not a good enough approach shot. And hence why the volley is not good enough. And Dimitrov can find an opening. It's just, yeah. it, it's it's not as ultra aggressive as, as what we used to. Break playing point. The, yeah, playing the percentages isn't going to work against, um, playing the percentages against um, uh, someone as aggressive as Dimitrov, playing as aggressive as Dimitrov isn't going to work. Um, Alcaraz has got a second serve to um, uh, to finish this off. Goes up the tee with that one. Oh, Dimitrov doesn't take advantage and puts it in the middle of the net. And he's frustrated because he knows that was an opportunity there. This is the low part of the net. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Could, could, that was a virtual match point there. So, um, yeah. I mean, what can I say? I'm just a fan of plums um didn't think you'd be saying that on the stream did you <laughs> there you go um i would say player in the top 10 that nick is likely to beat um, i have, have a best, have best chance. chance i mean okay. i'm gonna say that i have no hope against any of them but they uh, yeah no them. hope i would probably say on um I reckon you can move her around the court well and and maybe win some points. You've seen me play tennis, right? Oh, great tennis from Alcaraz there. I actually haven't, but... No, I don't think very many people have. No one wants to. Um, uh, I think the only way I would be, have a chance... The only way I have a chance against Anshaba is if she's injured, which I think she is actually injured. I think she's mm. one of the who actually is carrying an injury. So, yeah, that's the only reason I have any kind of chance. Mm. <laughs> not, not beat. Definitely could not beat Anshaba. Really, I mean, like, even if Anshaba was on one leg, she would serve an ace every single time, and I wouldn't be able to get a racket on it. Yeah, it's, here is Dimitrov moving Alcaraz side to side, controlling the rallies, dictating these points, using the slice effectively, cross court, and it's forced the error from Alcaraz, who hits the slice in the net, and he can't. Get out of this game. Back to juice. Yeah, and that's gonna. That's clearly providing some uh, frustration for Carlos Alcaraz, um, who uh, was Super. hoping to get this done to keep keep this set close. And this is what I mean about this game could decide things because if Dimitrov dips, that's gonna stop him from being. Uh, you know, Dimitrov dips, and um, yeah, that's just. Um, that could be a point of frustration for him. Yeah. I'll take his opportunity to get further ahead. Well, yeah, he's trying to stay alive in this match, forcing another game point with a big serve. Trying to stay alive. Um, Ghosty, to answer your question about Kasat Keenan, no, she's not. She's currently um, looking, she's actually number 11. Um, the current WTA top 10 is Sviantek Sabalenka, 
Goff, Rabakina, Pagula, Jabur, Sakari, Sheng, Von Drusova, and Ostapenko. Um, backhand cross court from Alcaraz. Backhand up the line from Dimitrov in the tram line, and it's game Alcaraz. And now we have to see how well Dimitrov handles the disappointment of not converting that break point. Mm. Seven minute 39 game. Yeah, this is going to be, I think I'm absolutely fascinated to see how Dimitrov deals with that. Yeah. Had a chance there to, to finish, to wrap up the match. Will it come back to haunt him? I don't think so, to be honest. Today doesn't look like much is affecting him. Here we go. Dimitrov sat in a break up, serves into the net first serve. Not a great start in this game. Does not want his first serve percentage to drop. That's just going to let Alcaraz back in. <sighs> Big forehand return winner. Huge from Alcaraz. That's the kind of thing Dimitrov was pulling off not long ago. <laughs> who's that guy? Some Alcaraz fan who's clearly very passionate. Seems to have gone out and bought one of his shirts. <laughs> oh, that is funny. Shwana, you are making the mistake of taking Nirlan seriously. Love 15, Al uh, Dimitrov, inside out, forehand to the Alcaraz, backhand. Well, 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 well. Oh. That seems to be firing now. This is this is what I thought might happen. This is what I thought might happen. Alcaraz has fired up. He's got himself out of trouble. Dimitrov is dealing with the disappointment of the last game and the bullet forehand is uncontrollable from the Bulgarian. Well, you just question yourself. Why Why has he not been going for those forehands up until this point? Why has he left it this, this late? Um, in the match, you're better late than never. But if he's going to want to, there is another one. Here we he's go. He's unloading at the minute. Don't play it to his forehand. And there it is. Wow. And the, the mighty roar. The mighty roar. He's not won the game yet, though. He might be celebrating a little bit too soon. It's love 40. Yes, he's well, got momentum right now, which is absolutely brilliant full-hand winners. He I mean, should break here, but it's not done yet. It feels like he's just letting out his anger in those forehands. If I was Griggle, I would keep it away from that forehand in the next few points. So, whether can Dimitrov keep this away from the forehand? His serve is going to be under so much pressure right now. He's got, he's got to go out wide. On this side, yeah, he has to because he's going. He's going into the ad side, so yeah, out wide first. He does, so he does do that. Just pulled it wide. Oh no! And Alcaraz is back on serve. Mm. I have just realised I need to turn my alarm off. Otherwise, my alarm is going to go off at seven a.m. Uh, and I don't actually have to get up at 7 a.m. because I don't have to work tomorrow. That's probably why you're doing the stream then. That is probably why I'm still here, yeah. Um, I was mm. only going to do the set one, and then set one went quite quick. So I was like, ah, oh, you know, this is fun. I'll stick with Jerome. Yeah. It's, it's, been, uh, it's been a good quality match. Um. Yeah, we've uh, it's it's certainly been good fun, and you know if Alcaraz can pull this comeback off, good on it. Love it, Ghosty's comment. He's he's really not wrong there. Esteril <laughs> sounds like pimple cream. I hadn't thought of that, but uh, <laughs> maybe. Um, who's um who's doing the um. A producer who's doing the uh, clearly producer's got an issue with um Damien and John. Um mm. also in combination. But um the um who's doing the Alexandra for Collins semi final? Which is obviously due to get underway at the end of this match. I mean it's like if this match um if this match doesn't finish soon then uh, that one's gonna dictate it's supposed to start with um uh 
1 at 1 p.m. 1 a.m. Okay, so not confirmed that stream's happening yet. We'll have to see how it goes. Um, all right, so Alcaraz serves out wide. Backhand cross court. Slice from Dimitrov on the defence. Alcaraz tries to do the counter drop shot and puts it in the net. Love 15. And he's kind of got, looks a bit confused at, that, at what just happened there. I mean, it's positive from Alcaraz, though. He's clearly, you know, in, aggress in an aggressive stint of play which should help him but Grig is going to want to bounce back pretty quickly now all right so yeah he's going to he's going to want to cut this break in front of him and he goes out body serve Alcaraz Dimitrov's forehand is in goes cross cut with the forehand drags it wide and he's frustrated and these aggressive shots that he was using to move Alcaraz around him put him up in the rally and were going have been going in for a set and a half Aren't mm. quite making it now. Yeah, not quite there. Not quite there. Fifteen all. How rattled is Grigor Dimitrov? Yeah, I think he's feeling the pressure now. Oh, and the backhand snapshot oh. on the half volley doesn't make it over the net. Thirty fifteen. We were making these kind of gasps for Dimitrov threading the needle with that backhand up the line mm. passing shot and that one just clipped the top of the net. Yeah, he just didn't get low enough on that one. Didn't get low, 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 low. Um, <laughs> uh, 30-15, Alcaraz goes out wide on the serve. Dimitrov puts it into the net, but it doesn't matter because the serve is wide anyway. So Alcaraz is going to give him a second serve to look at. Mm. And Dimitrov, mm. forehand, was well over the baseline. It's 40-15. He was trying a bit too hard with that one. Yeah. Pressure's on now. How, how much in danger is Dimitrov of having the set running away from him? Well, I think if, I mean, if he can, if he goes to four all, I mean, that, that's... That import that service game is, you know, important as as anyone now. Well, it is now for all. If Gruger can hold here, um, you feel that's a big, big, big ask in the way that the momentum has just shifted now. Three games on the trot for Alcaraz. You wouldn't be surprised if he goes on to rip some forehands and and break here. But if Gruger can hold off, then it's it's good signs. He needs to snap this momentum now. Yeah, I, 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 at this trajectory, I'm thinking Alcaraz is about to win five games in a row to take a set. Mm. Yeah, and and if it is, you you really feel for for him in the third set. You feel like what that will do for him mentally is is not good. They have new balls. Alcaraz has changed rackets. Grigor Dimitrov is holding up the tennis ball to show that they have changed the set, and it's go and. He, Huge first serve on the body serve. Backhand Dimitrov, backhand up the line from Alcaraz. Forehand Dimitrov pushes Alcaraz back, to, then goes cross court on his backhand. They're trading backhands right now. Slice from Dimitrov. Alcaraz runs around to hit the forehand. He's got time. Slice it up the line from Dimitrov. Alcaraz forehand cross court is long. 15 love. Yeah, the quality is just upped a bit more now. The intensity is up. You know, the rallies. Both players know what's on the line. They're both going for all their shots here. That's a that was a more pot the most positive point from Dimitrov that I've seen since that really tight four one game mm. when he had chances to break. Yeah, I mean he had a virtual match point there. So um. yeah, depending of course on how uh, that service game went, but you know yeah, whether he was just or not. slots the return right back in the corner and Dimitrov on the stretch can't keep the ball down. 15 all. Just rising here in Miami. It's already pretty sweaty there in the tropical heat. And, mm. uh, well, it's just gotten even sweatier. For both, but particularly Grigor Dimitrov, who's now going to be serving, goes out wide, then gets the forehand, going to try and come in Alcaraz nets, seeing Dimitrov moving forward, 30-15. It's a good approach shot. Got it nice and deep, skidded through the back of the line, and Carlos can't get it over. So, still a positive service game overall for Dimitrov, um, keeping himself, you know, 
just, you know, he's still got that set advantage, even if he doesn't have a break anymore. Something's disrupted him. Looks like there's a bug on court with Al Alcaraz is rescuing and then promptly drops and then continues to chase around the tennis court. So we're currently watching um, <laughs> something going on. I don't know what the insect is. Um, if you like insects, um, you probably be able to tell us. Um, I would have thought Alcaraz would have enough of them, to be honest, given the bee incident in Indian Wells. Maybe they just like him. Stuitrov is going up the tee, but he misses it. So second serve. Slight disruption uh, here with um, uh, with Dimitrov. Second serve goes out wide. That was a really smart second serve. Okay, it was high risk. Clipped the line, but did the job. 40-15. Hmm. Yeah, that was a that could have gone horribly wrong for Dimitrov if that didn't work. Um, maybe it was a little bit too too close to the edge of the line than he probably would have liked. So Dimitrov has now got two game points to take us into a change event with him being a game away from the match. He would have preferred it to still have the break, but he'll take what he can get. Second serve for Grigor Dimitrov, who goes. Out wide, Alcaraz forehand and play, backhand slice from Dimitrov. Alcaraz already runs it down with his slice. Dimitrov tries to, is at the net. Alcaraz passes him. That that volley from Dimitrov was not great. It's 40-30. Mm. Actually, it wasn't even a volley. He sort of picked it up off the ground. It was like... Yeah, I think that's one of the, the most satisfying shots in tennis is the, the, the Carlos backhand slice there, just popping it just over the net, down at the feet of, of Dimitrov, just... I mean, yeah, great shot. Oh, but the ace from Dimitrov down the tee seals the game and he snaps Carlos Alcaraz's momentum to win his first game in four. 5-4, four, first set, critical, second set. Critical Dimitrov is a game away from knocking out Carlos Alcaraz. That would have been a much more significant had he held that, had he held serve before but here we are i mean if he'd held serve before that would have been him serving out the match it's a moot point yeah for, for, yeah satisfying shots in tennis I'm, I'm trying to think um the carl Alcaraz for me it would be the carl Alcaraz running forehand hmm. um the eager Fiontech forehand uh particularly up the line, yes. Yeah. Um, as close to the baseline as possible. Djokovic sliding backhand, definitely. Oh yes. Um, the Djokovic slider. Um, oh, who else? Um, <laughs> Medvedev's forehand. <laughs> that's that's something else. I'm trying to think whose backhand I really like watching because um, all of my favorite shots are forehands. Dimitrov isn't isn't too bad. <laughs> No, no, that's true. The Dominic team backhand in his prime Ooh, that yeah. was brutal. Yeah. Um that was that was breathtaking when he really, really hit through it. So fun fact if Dimitrov makes it through this match, uh, he'll set up a semi final against Sasha Zverev. An opponent, an opponent he has beaten once, but that was in 2014. Oh, the, the seven matches that followed in their head-to-head -head have all gone the way of the German. But that's a good start to the game from Dimitrov. Flick backhand return win across court. That's Alcaraz, what he was pulling up earlier in the set as well. Alcaraz, the end of the first. No answers. Three points away. <sighs> Yeah, that and like that Zverev match he would have played. Zverev would have been a baby back then. Yeah, honestly, like he would have barely been old enough to play pros. Well, how old is Zverev now? He's twenty six, I believe. Yeah, so Zverev would have been eight. Yeah, sixteen at the time. Yeah, there you go. Oh. And Dimitrov is god. Oh. Yeah, he, great point construction from Dimitrov. Sets himself up with the space to hit the forehand into, 
and he gets Love 30s two points away from this match. This is the more like the Dimitrov we've had for most of the match. Our, I don't think Alcaraz has backed off. I think Dimitrov has raised the intensity again. He's reset yeah. and he's coming for Carlos Alcaraz. Love 30 on the Alcaraz serve. Alcaraz is two points away from being knocked out of the tournament. Here we go. Here we go. Serves body serve misses it so he's got a second serve the pressure is still on but he's kind of already into the service motion he's not bouncing the ball he's going for the second serve goes up body serve dimitrov's backhand just clips the net forehand dimitrov oh he was trying to slide it past alcaraz he was sending mid court but he just misses it and it's 15 30 alcaraz gets a point on the board i mean dimitrov's running forehand was very much a uh on the defense on the back foot like hitting hoping that it was gonna it was gonna do something because well alcaraz if he'd gone any other direction alcaraz would have picked it off it had to be that risky alcaraz's oh first service in God. inside out forehand slice from dimitrov alcaraz has got the, has got the valley. great pass from dimitrov that that i mean that is the shot i was telling about that is just insane how he's just looped that one just over the net from that angle is just incredible and to get up to it as well to finish it off and execute is incredible wow. that's the kind of speed we expect from the younger opponent the spaniard the world number two the number one seed here in miami Carlos alcaraz who is going to be serving two match points down he's uh, he's now really his back is really up against the wall this is for his survival in this tournament Carlos alcaraz is going to serve into the net so his tournament hopes depend on a second serve being good let's see where he gets with this carlos alcaraz serves yeah. back forehand to dimitrov forehand alcaraz cross court is wide and dimitrov roars hands in the air he is through he ruins the top four lockout but we don't care because anytime Grigor dimitrov wins it's a good news story he is through to the miami open semi-finals and carlos alcaraz is out schwarner says it's a huge upset do you agree? I I mean, per, I mean personally, I, I don't think it's it's a massive upset. Um, it's obviously a, a stunning result for Dimitrov, but the way he's been playing um, in recent months is, I mean, this is a testament to how hard he's been working, and when he can, and this is probably the pinnacle of it. He's, all this hard work is leading up to moments like this, um, which will probably see him go back inside the top 10 in, in no time at all. Sets up a match against Verov, who he hasn't beaten since 2014. But, I mean, with the way he's playing, you know, he, he, he'd fancy his chances now. Um, for sure, for sure. I mean, like, yeah, there's a there's an opportunity to turn something around to get a victory over Zverev. Um, with the way he's playing, he's going to be pretty confident. Um I guess it's going to depend on how what what Zverev brings uh, tomorrow. But yeah, I think Sinner and Medvedev are probably looking at this going. Yeah, the winner of our semi final is going to be the favourite for this. Yeah, I think. Well, I think Medvedev Sinner. I think I, I said it a couple of days ago. I think the winner of that semi final will win the tournament, um, and that's just become ever more likely now. I think. But you never know. I do think this might be a really good chance for Medvedev to finally break that losing streak he is having against Sinner. He's been getting closer and closer to beating him each time uh, they've played. Um, Sinner may be looking a little bit more vulnerable compared to how he has been recently. Uh, I have a sneaky suspicion this might be Medvedev's tournament. I agree. I think... Um... Yeah, I think Medvedev's going to go and defend defend that title. Which would be the first time he's ever done that. Mm. He's never successfully defended a title before. Yeah. And it would be good. I mean, it would be good to see from he uh he to be fair, I mean, he's been so, so unlucky in finals in recent times and obviously the Australian Open again two set lead, but it would be good if he could defender a master 1000 um he deserves it but wow what a couple of semi-finals we've got 
Yeah, and we'll try. We'll we'll be bringing those semi-finals to you on Talking Tennis. Um, so uh, subscribe if you haven't already um, uh, to see that content, and hopefully you enjoyed the stream. Let's bring it to life. Um, hopefully we're better than the commentators you got on TV. If you couldn't watch, hopefully we gave you a good uh, description of it. But yeah, Jerome, what are your what's your kind of your wrapping up thoughts on what we just witnessed? Well, I feel like I'm in 2017. That was um, a stellar performance from Grigor Dimitrov. I still, still a bit, uh, wow. I mean, it's pretty electric. I mean, the way he, he battled back from from that blip, uh, and yeah, I feel like that is probably one of his best ever performances in in his career. I think actually, um, I mean. I'm, going to put it out there it's probably one of his biggest wins by far and it's really actually refreshing to see I said at the start I really like how he's kind of resurfacing at, at the top of his game after after um a couple of years you know since that peak in 2017 he went a couple of years just borderline top 20 top 30 player but now he's asserting himself right at the top he's he's um you know, he's beating the big guys and one of the biggest guys in tennis right now in Carlos Alcaraz. Yeah, I think assertive is the word to use. And I agree. I think this is Grigor Dimitrov's best win for a long, long time. I can't think of uh, another win he's had in recent years mm. that kind of on a similar magnitude. Um Obviously, I think if he ever beat Djokovic, that would be a bigger deal. Yeah, definitely. Now, I can think of matches where there's been, you know, insane quality, but, um, you know, to do it against uh, Alcaraz as well is, is... Let's just listen to him now, actually, speaking. While he's listening for that, thanks for the $5, Ghosty. You have to let us know if you're saying anything interesting. <laughs> He's happy finishing straight sets. <laughs> yeah, be, that's going to be a relief, given be, how he's yeah. back. His game plan was to use every opportunity he had. He was putting him in very difficult positions and he was being aggressive. I mean, just like we saw. That's what he's saying. Yeah, once you give him the the time of day, Alcaraz is going to punish you. Um, and, you know, he took that away from him. And that's, I think we said at the start of the stream, what have you got to do to beat Alcaraz? You've got to take it away from him. And, you know. You have to play the match on your terms and keep yeah. it on your terms. And that's what Grigor did, yeah. And that's rare. It's rare to do that against Alcaraz. We've only seen it a handful of times in in recent uh, months. But, you know. And and here's the thing, you know, you, 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 producers reminding us that his match with against Hanson was 46 minutes. Suddenly, this level is world beating against pretty much anyone. And although he's probably the outside contender out of the top out of the four semi finalists, he's a realistic contender. It wouldn't be crazy for him to win this title. Yeah, it's as uh, it, it, uh, yeah. I mean, if with performances like that, it, you, you're right. It wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be like out of this world if he was to win it. But it's going to be interesting if he if if he can get to to a final that is. But to see how he plays against Sasha, who's who's you know going to punish him with those serves. Um, so let's see. Alcaraz is, I don't really. 
don't really recall. I mean, Alcaraz did hit a few aces, but his serving game wasn't the greatest. Mm. Everyone, um, yeah, Vanch, Vanch's tweet is kind of where I was thinking of, you know, the match, the, Jimmy Trump's best match of his career was up to this point, thought to be that Australian Open semi-final against the Dal, where he narrowly lost. Mm. Um, but yeah, the the level he brought, he outplayed Alcaraz. Like we were uh, in awe of the tennis he was playing, uh, the winners he was producing, Grigor Dimitrov. Um, and yeah, obviously it's going to depend on the quality of the opponent. But you know, Zverev is again. If Zverev relies on kind of soaking up and sabotaging the other person's game, and if you're on fire. Actually, that's gonna that's not gonna have much effect. So I think Dimitrov has a reasonable chance there, and then it's gonna come down to how does he deal with Sinner or Medvedev in the final? Um yeah, it's gonna be depend completely on whether he can carry on this kind of level, which I think has been Dimitrov's biggest problem in his career. Um, especially when it comes to the biggest level tournaments. Yeah, yeah, he has a Masters one thousand title already, Cincinnati twenty seventeen. Um he did win the ATP Files. I think he got a little bit fortunate that David Goff and beat Roger Federer. Um, otherwise, and I'm not just talking as a Federer fan. I think that was a weird loss from Federer that year. Um, uh, and had he played Federer in the final, he probably wouldn't have been the champion. No. Uh, I think that's going to be the biggest question for him is carrying that on. Um, but I think he's going to give it a darn good go. And we've been saying he's been he's playing the best tennis that we've we've seen from him for a while yeah i mean and arguably you could probably say well not the best but you know he's very is very, very, also you know at, at high point in in his game so that is going to be an interesting match up to see if he can kind of get get his head to head a, a bit of a boost there <laughs> <laughs> because it needs actually, it but... actually beat him when he's not a scrawny teenager <laughs> yeah exactly um but yeah, I think I need to to go to bed after that, and I'm going to wake up tomorrow still thinking about it. But uh, yeah, and we'll look. We'll probably be talking about this result tomorrow, or whoever's doing the stream. Uh, yeah, that one is going to be doing that. Um, I was going to say, oh, I'm going to do a quick plug before wrapping up. Um, not for my work actually, but for Mario's. Um, I saw that. If yeah. those of you who might be starting to jump to conclusions about where Alcaraz is at. I highly recommend the piece that Mario just produced for Popcorn Tennis, his debut for the site. Um, he, it's the most, re it literally came out today. It's our most recent post, um, but it's about um, how uh, sort of the narrative we can get, we can quickly react to results and write off or overhype players. Um, and Alcaraz and Sinner have been fixing that recently and both proved uh, the narratives wrong um, based on sort of recent form. So definitely worth checking that article out in light of this uh, Alcaraz loss. Um, breaking, so yeah, and that's obviously from Mario. Breaking news, Alexandra Vogt versus Collins is going to be on the channel, which is going to be in five minutes. So Jerome and I are going to go to bed um, in our separate cities. And um, I will, uh, it's, it's been absolutely brilliant. Thanks so much for your time, Jerome. Um, Thank maybe you. See you um, on another stream. Definitely. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Take care, everyone, and keep talking tennis. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.